Tonight at 10, a local expert discusses the importance of being thankful year-round. And a Rock County group is providing a free Thanksgiving dinner for members of the LGBTQ community. And what President Trump is saying about border control and immigration. This is News 3 at 10. Thank you for joining us. It has been a cold Thanksgiving and we could see some winter weather in the forecast. Let's check in with meteorologist Hattie McLean with your first alert forecast. Hi, Hattie. Hi, Charlotte. We have it all in the forecast over the coming weekend. Rain and snow, wind and cold temperatures as well. Here's a look at weather track this evening. We're seeing some clouds still here in Madison. Skies have been clear, though, for southwestern Wisconsin and now starting to clear in the Janesville area. Eventually, the clouds will lift to the north overnight. Temperatures are in the mid 30s, so not terribly cold right now. And with southerly winds all night, I do expect temperatures to hold nearly steady for the overnight hours. So as you head out the door tomorrow morning here in Madison, and southern Wisconsin, temperatures will be in the mid 30s. We're looking at highs, though, in the mid 40s during the afternoon. Rain develops after 3 p.m. as well. And that's your first alert forecast. Hattie, thank you. The Rock County Medical Examiner has identified the man killed in a Beloit shooting last night. Officials say 49-year-old Jose Reyes was killed in a shooting on the 1700 block of Harrison Avenue around 8.15 last night. Emergency medical services took Reyes to a local hospital where he later died. Police have arrested one suspect, a 20-year-old man, and they are not looking for any more suspects at this time. On this holiday, the focus is on what we are thankful for. But psychologists say being grateful year-round can improve aspects of your life, ranging from your overall happiness to the quality of your sleep. Our Madeline O'Neill tells us how and what little things you can be doing every day to better your life. Maddie? Charlotte, psychology research shows gratitude is one of the number one things most highly connected to happiness. A local expert tells us the correlation is about as strong as can be. So it might be worth it to carry that thankful spirit along with you after you get up from the dinner table today. I have so much to thank the good Lord up above for today. And it's just awesome. They're simple words. Thank you often heard around the Thanksgiving table. And I'm also thankful for my hands. I was thinking of that because I could help Melissa make all this wonderful food for people. On this holiday, giving thanks comes naturally. It feels like a family gathering to me. Even for those who can't be with their traditional families. My family's all back in south of Fort Wayne, Indiana. That's the case for many, enjoying a free meal here at Cornucopia Arts and Wellness Center. It's a place to help those with mental health issues on their plates. I'm so glad there's an oasis of understanding. This Thanksgiving, Cornucopia lives up to its name, offering an abundance of food and friendly company. Too easy to focus on the negative. So turning their attention to the positive isn't so hard. I'm going to say not for me. It's not for easy. me. <laughs> In action, psychologists say offers widespread benefits. We sometimes have an inclination to focus on what's wrong instead of what's right. Psychologist Bob McGrath offers counseling services at UW-Madison and guided meditations, which often focus on gratitude. It boosts happiness, it increases optimism. Um, actually, people start exercising more. It's like, what? <laughs> How is that even related? But again, the one's sense of, of well-being increases and everything starts rolling along with it. The gratitude is already rolling at this dinner table, but McGrath says the goal is to have it spill over into everyday life. It don't have to be Thanksgiving or it's... At Cornucopia, they already have plenty of gratitude to go around. People focus on the negative and um, we try to focus on the positive. To carry over a sense of gratitude into everyday life, McGrath suggests keeping a short gratitude journal where you can write down a few things you're thankful for every night. Charlotte. Very good idea. Mm -hmm. Madeline, thank you. For the second straight year, the First Congregational Church in Beloit is pairing with a group called Yellow Brick Road to provide a free Thanksgiving dinner for members of the LGBTQ community. 
The meal included turkey, stuffing, and all the usual fixings. The group's founder says it was the concept of Thanksgiving that led her group to be founded in the first place after she realized the reality that some LGBTQ youth in the area were living. Kids especially, they get kicked out of their homes because of the way they identify. And 40% uh, of homeless youth are identifying as LGBT. Mm -hmm. So we thought it was important to have a Thanksgiving meal on Thanksgiving Day. Shu says she hopes the event continues to grow in the future. About 6,800 runners and walkers flocked to the Burby Derby in Fitchburg this morning. For the 15th year, people either ran a 10K or walked a 5K. The run started in 2004 and was a way to bring people together to have fun before that Thanksgiving dinner. Now the run has turned into an event to support nonprofit programs with technology and technology in schools. It's really bringing families together and friends. They're outside. They don't have their face in front of a computer. They don't have their face in a phone. They're just enjoying each other, and that's just a huge benefit, and it's something that all of us that volunteer, we have 500 volunteers every single year. That's why we do it. 42 of the people who participated in the Derby have participated every year since its creation. For the 23rd year, Good Shepherd Lutheran Church is sharing thanks with a holiday meal. The church expected about 400 people to come throughout the day for a Thanksgiving meal with all the trimmings there as well. This is the third year Pastor Joe Brocious has been involved who truly enjoys giving back to the community. This is really a community meal. There's people here who might not have a place to go or people that can't afford a meal or don't want to be alone on the holidays or we have a lot of families that this is their holiday traditions. Planning for the meal begins in August and takes about 150 volunteers to cook and carve 70 pounds of turkey. Then on the big day, about 100 volunteers help serve and clean up. Hundreds of volunteers help serve a big meal to hundreds of people at Lambeau Field on Thanksgiving Day. Over 900 were expected at today's annual ecumenical Thanksgiving dinner in the Lambeau Field atrium. Christian Outreach has been holding these dinners at Lambeau Field for the past 16 years. Along with serving the meal in the atrium, volunteers also delivered hundreds of meals to people in the community. The group uses over 1,500 pounds of turkey and 650 pounds of potatoes for the event. An estimated 3.5 million people turned out to watch the annual Macy's Thanksgiving Day Parade in the Big Apple. The 21 degree temperature at the start of the day made it one of the coldest Thanksgivings in the city in decades. Some revelers camped out all night on the unseasonably cold holiday to get that front row seat. And many of those along the two and a half mile parade route say they were not deterred by the brisk weather. I have six layers on, five layers on underneath this and my snow boots on. I don't care how cold it gets. I'm in North Dakota. We can handle cold. Members of the NYPD kept an eye on how the wind affected each of those giant balloons and thousands of officers were also deployed to keep the parade route secure. Commute Lakite Bucky, one of the Bucky on Parade statues, appeared in the Chicago Thanksgiving Parade. Bucky on Parade was a free public art event featuring 85 life-size Bucky Badger statues throughout Madison and Dane County this past summer. Commute Lakite Bucky was placed by the Wisconsin Capitol this summer and it was sponsored by Travel Wisconsin. Commute Lakite is German and it means a feeling of warmth, friendliness and good cheer. President Trump spent Thanksgiving thanking the military for their hard work and sacrifices, but he wasn't in a giving mood regarding border control and immigration. Nicole Killian reports from Washington. President Trump enjoyed a traditional Thanksgiving meal with friends and family at his Mar-a-Lago resort in Florida on Thursday night. But even while celebrating Thanksgiving, the president was refusing to give ground on some core issues. Mr. Trump began the day with phone calls to military leaders stationed overseas. I say to our great, great warriors, hello and happy Thanksgiving. The president praised the officers for their service, then turned to other topics, including federal judges, trade and immigration. If we find that it's um, 
it gets to a level where we are going to lose control or where people are going to start getting hurt, we will close entry into the country for a period of time. With a large caravan of Central American migrants nearing the southern U.S. border, the president said drastic steps may be necessary to maintain security. Some 6,000 troops have already been deployed to the region. If they have to, they're going to use lethal force. I've, I've given the okay. Yeah, if they have to, I hope they don't have to. Defense Secretary James Mattis says the White House has authorized the military to protect customs and border protection personnel. However, Mattis says the soldiers will not be used as a police force. President Trump repeated his call to build a wall along the Mexican border. The wall is just a part of border security, a very important part, probably the most important part. The president also hinted at a government shutdown in December if Congress doesn't fund that wall. Nicole Killian, CBS News, Washington. And President Trump again criticized the Ninth Circuit Court of Appeals, tweeting that the San Francisco-based court's rulings on immigration would lead to, quote, bedlam, chaos, injury, and death. The holiday shopping season is in full swing, and 164 million shoppers are expected to hunt for discounts this holiday weekend. Brick and mortar stores are hoping the strong economy and bargains will entice shoppers to spend more money this year. Analysts believe this could be a make or break holiday shopping season for struggling retailers like Sears and JCPenney. They for all retail is a pretty crucial time of the year because it's our biggest time of the year. Experts say 71% of Americans are expected to hunt for gifts this holiday weekend with the average person spending $1,000 during the shopping season. That is up 4% from last year. A new survey finds many will also be shopping online when they return to work next week. According to a survey by staffing firm Robert Half Technology, nearly two-thirds of professionals say they plan to shop online at work this holiday season. Three out of ten people say they will search retailers several times a week. There is more to come right here on News 3 at 10. Up next, the FDA is trying to figure out where the tainted romaine lettuce originated from. We'll have the very latest next.
Across the nation, romaine lettuce most likely was not part of today's Thanksgiving meal. The FDA is warning people to throw out all romaine because of fears it may carry a potentially deadly strain of E. coli. Now the agency is looking at California as a potential source of that tainted lettuce. Anna Werner has the latest. Throwing it away. <laughs> So wasteful. Forget about serving this toss salad on the Thanksgiving table. All these leafy greens at Alameda Natural Grocery in California are going straight to the garbage. Cases of romaine, packages of romaine, um, probably over 200 pounds of lettuce we've thrown away. Health officials say romaine lettuce should be removed from all supermarket shelves and restaurant menus until they can determine the source of a new E. coli outbreak. A potentially deadly strain of the bacteria has sickened 32 people in 11 states since October. Nearly a third of the cases, nine, are in Los Angeles County. Yeah. Scott Horsfall, the CEO of the California Leafy Greens Marketing Agreement, says most of the romaine on the market when the outbreak began was grown in his state. Given the harvest cycle at that time, I think there's, there's, a, there's a good possibility that it came from California, yes. But he also says finding the exact farm will be difficult because it takes about two to three weeks for investigators to confirm an E. coli outbreak is underway. So by the time they're actually doing trace back, um, there is no packaging left. There's no product left. An important clue for investigators is the bacteria's DNA. It's very similar to the E. coli strain that caused a still unsolved outbreak in 2017. The CDC says about 48 million people get sick from foodborne illnesses every year, 46% of them from eating leafy vegetables and other produce. Cooking kills most germs found in food, but because romaine lettuce is usually eaten raw, that's not really an option. The CDC says just throw it out. It's not worth the risk. Anna Werner, New York. Americans eat about 30 million servings of romaine lettuce every day. Meteorologist Hattie McLean joins us now with a look at this upcoming holiday weekend. Yeah, it's going to get a little interesting around here. We'll oh, say that. yeah, Sunday. Everybody's keeping their eye on Sunday, especially because it's a big travel, travel day. day. Yep, mm -hmm. it's a huge travel day across the area, and we'll talk about that potential for snow coming up then. Let's first take a step back, though, and look at those high temperatures today. 55 in Des Moines. St. Louis topped in, six, uh, topped in the 60s at 63 degrees. 40 in Chicago. So there was quite a uh, contrast in temperatures, just over a few hundred miles. 35 here in Madison. There were some spots, though, in southwestern Wisconsin that did creep into the 40s today. Here's a look at what's happening on the satellite and radar maps. We're not seeing any radar returns across the area. Still dealing with a low deck of clouds here in and around much of Dane County, but to the south and west, skies are clear. Skies are starting to clear along the Wisconsin Illinois state line as well. So eventually, these clouds are going to lift to the north and skies will turn partly cloudy if not mostly clear overnight. Your Black Friday forecast then if you're headed out early tomorrow morning partly cloudy skies at 6 o'clock temperatures in the mid 30s as we go through the day we're going to see a nice warm up into the 40s a little breezy at the lunch hour but still dry by 4 p.m. some of those scattered showers starting to move into the area but temperatures will be in the mid 40s so if you have plans later in the day on Friday grab that umbrella. Here's a look at your 48 hour rain chances and you can see uh, the trend is to ramp upward late in the day on Friday. Definitely wet Friday night across the area into very early Saturday morning. But by the time we hit 10 o'clock on Saturday, those rain chances really falling apart here across southern Wisconsin. So looks like things will dry out then for the rest of the day on Saturday. After that, on Sunday, we have an alert day in the forecast due to the potential for accumulating snow. Now, confidence is increasing that we'll see a storm system in the area. We still could see a mix of rain and snow across parts of southern Wisconsin that will have a big impact on how much snow we receive, but there is a chance for anywhere from two to six inches of snow possible. Here's a look at your GFS future track forecast model starting at noon on Saturday. Dry for most of the state. Saturday looks good if you are traveling. It's Sunday that we're concerned about. We'll look for some moisture to move in overnight Saturday night into Sunday. Could see a mix changing over to snow later in the day on Sunday and then eventually coming to an end as we head into Monday. But there will likely be a band of some pretty heavy snow accumulations across the upper Midwest. Now the exact track of the storm still a little bit under question. So 
So that band of heavier snow is likely going to fluctuate over the next couple of days. But there you can see some of those snow totals on that forecast map. Temperatures are currently in the 30s here across southern Wisconsin. Mid 30s right now and that's where we'll stay overnight thanks to a southerly wind. Those winds from the south increasing to 10 to 20 miles an hour tomorrow. So turning quite breezy at times. Those southerly winds though warming us up. Take a look at your future track temperatures warming through the 30s into the 40s tomorrow with a lot of clouds. That rain moves into the area after 3 o'clock and then continues across the region overnight into early Saturday morning. Here's a look at your extended forecast then. We have temperatures that are going to climb into the 40s again on Saturday. Any rain should end early in the day. Sunday will be a little colder. It'll be windy as well with snow likely, possibly mixed with rain. It all ends Monday morning and then look at that. Charlotte, we're back to highs in the 20s. Boy, that'll it's wake like, you up like a slap in the face, huh? It's like January cold. <laughs> oh, gosh. All right, Eddie, thank you. You're welcome. The Badgerman's basketball team has a three point party in the Bahamas to stay undefeated. That story coming up in sports. For the Badgers, though, they had some fun at their resort in a place called Paradise Island. The Badgers sure glad to have Dimitri Trice back from his injury. He's been on fire from three-point range. Today, he makes seven of eight from distance. Trice leads the Badgers with 25 points. And Ethan Happ does it again, his fifth straight game with a double-double. 
He even pulled out the old left-handed jump hook here. 14 points, 12 rebounds for Hap. The Badgers stay undefeated. The final score, Wisconsin 78, Oklahoma 58. Kobe King also scored a career-high 14 points. The Badgers made 14 of 22 from three-point range today. Wisconsin will play in the championship game of the Bad Boy Mowers Battle for Atlantis tomorrow. They'll play in the title game tomorrow afternoon at 1 on ESPN. And they'll face the University of Virginia and head coach Tony Bennett. Virginia knocked off Dayton in the semifinals today, 66-59. Wisconsin and Virginia met a year ago in the Big Ten ACC Challenge when Virginia was ranked number one in the country. The Cavaliers won that game 49-37. Don't look now, but the Chicago Bears are looking like the monsters of the Midway 2.0. The Bears win again as they played the Lions in Detroit this afternoon. Now with Mitchell Trubisky out, Chase Daniel gets his first start in four years, and he makes some good plays like this touchdown pass to Tariq Cohen. Still a tie game, 16-16 with six minutes left. Matthew Stafford would like this one back. The Bears' Eddie Jackson jumps the route. It's an easy pick six. Final score, Bears 23, Lions 16. So here's how the NFC North looks now. The Bears extend their lead over second-place Minnesota and the third-place Packers, and it's basically over for the Lions as they fall to 4-7 and seven on the season. So that brings us to the Packers and Vikings in Minneapolis Sunday night. It's their second meeting of the season. Their first ended up in a 29-29 tie at Lambeau in September. It's really hard to underestimate the importance of this game for both teams. It's important. They all are. I don't really know how to uh, give you a different answer on it. It's an important game. Uh, you know, we, we need and want to come out with a win. And uh, there's certainly a sense of urgency as there is every week as we prepare. we got to play a great game. You know, they're a fantastic defense. They got weapons on offense, and we're going to have to score, uh, you know, score 30 and, uh, and be efficient. I, I look at it as a must win at this point. We, we don't really have any other games to, to spare. Um, you know, they, they are a great team, so we, we definitely got to bring it when we get out there. Um, just not, not take it lightly at this point. It's, uh, it's pretty much do or die. The other NFL games today, Dallas took the lead in the AFC East with a win over Washington. The Saints now 10-1. and They beat Atlanta in New Orleans tonight. And in that Cowboys game in Dallas, Ezekiel Elliott scored on a 16-yard touchdown run, and Zeke is a generous fellow. He actually had a guy in the end zone hold his money. The guy gave Elliott the cash, $21 to match his number, and Zeke dropped it in the big Salvation Army kettle in the end zone. He was penalized for unsportsmanlike conduct, but Elliott later turned his pledge into $21,000 for the Salvation Army after the game. And we'll be right back.
And Hattie's back with a final check of your forecast. Staying pretty quiet during the overnight hours. Temperatures will hold nearly steady in the mid 30s with a south wind. Our extended forecast, though, as we head through the rest of the weekend, does get a little active around here. We have rain moving in late on Friday, ending early Saturday, and then snow on Sunday. Sunday's the day to watch. It's an alert day. That's no may impact travel. All right, Hattie, you get to sleep in tomorrow. Yes. Good to see you. <laughs> Thank you for joining us. Hope you had a wonderful Thanksgiving. Do something good, and we'll see you back here tomorrow.